us just a second. Blessed assurance when Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste, glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior, am happy at best. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Praising my Savior all the day long. Great. 
my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art, how great Thou art, how great Thou Morning, everybody. How's everybody today? If you're a first time guest, we want to welcome you. We're glad you're here to join us today. The small group host lunch will be today, right after church, <clears throat> for all host families and anyone interested in hosting a small group. The next family fun day is this next Saturday at 9:30 a.m. The infos are on the offering tables. Elder nominations. We're opening up for nominations for a new elder. Nomination forms and qualifications are available on the offering tables. Nomination forms may be dropped in any offering basket. <clears throat> There's a finance team meeting today right after church. Leadership meet, team meeting is next Sunday after church. VBS, scuba diving into friendship with God, is June 17th through the 20th from 6 to 8.30 p.m. There's a sign-up sheet on the offering tables for volunteer sign-up. We need lots of volunteers, and we'll have a short meeting next Sunday after church for anyone that would like to help this year. Camp raffle tickets. All raffle ticket money and unsold tickets are due next Sunday. Uh, Marie Walker would like to say a few things about the next women's event. It's actually Jeanette that's gonna say something. If you hear a funny noise, it's my knees are knocking. <laughs> um, my name is Jeanette Gomes. I was married to a wonderful Portuguese man who died two years ago. And uh, they started a grief share um, group on Monday nights at 6 p.m. It started out being with ladies, and now if uh, we realize that men sometimes lose their wives and they really need a place to come, just to share their grief. A lot of us just sit there and when we remember certain things, we just start crying. And so on 6.30, we start Bible study and we're learning how to pray. Everybody prays differently. We think we know how to pray and I have learned so much about the things that I didn't know about prayer. So we have this booklet that we've been studying for about six months and um, <clears throat> Bible study is uh, having a conversation with God the way that you mean to talk with God. On June 1st, we would like to share some of the things that we have learned while studying in this booklet. And um, pamphlets are on the back. It says, Praying with Women. It's Saturday, June 1st from 9 to 4. We are providing lunch. It's a come and go. You can come for the morning session. You can leave. You can come for the afternoon session if you can't make the morning session. And uh, at 4 o'clock, it's fun time. Ladies, bring your guns, your firearms, and your, all the ammunition that you want to shoot from 4 to 6. Bring I made a mistake of putting those little plug-in things and they don't work. So find those head things that put over your head because it is loud. So we have fun and we'd like to invite you all. God bless. All right, uh, real quickly here, I'm gonna reiterate one of the announcements that, uh, that, that uh, Dwayne made and uh, real quickly on the, the elder nomination forms. Uh, if, uh, if you take that, I'm going to ask you to take it this week, take it home with you, pray over it, uh, pray about that, and then uh, bring that back next week 
and uh, drop that in the offering basket, and uh, then we'll uh, we'll take it from there and uh, begin uh, vetting those individuals that uh, that you write down. Okay. Now then, we've got a we got a special day today. Uh, it's a, it's a day that we always set aside this time of year to uh, honor some uh, some graduates, uh, some of those that have uh, completed this chapter of their life. As uh, man, they are they have completed. Uh, uh, or in the on the process, if you would, of, of completing high school, uh, this is probably we, we don't have very many this year, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Uh, but we do have a few that we want to recognize, and that uh, man that we want to uh, honor. So, if when I call your name, uh, if you would, uh, man, please come up. Uh, if you're if you're here, uh, Miss uh, Caitlin Gordon, is Caitlin here this morning? I did not. I, I did not. I did not see her. Okay. Uh, Miss Caitlin's not here, so we'll go on. Uh, Miss Hannah Rogers, and I, Tracy color coded these for me. Yeah, come on up here. Come on up here, young lady. There you go. There you go. Yeah, you know you got to talk. No, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Miss uh, Miss Hannah, uh, graduating from. I don't want to hold it for you. You hold it. Miss Hannah gra graduating from uh, Cisco, uh, Cisco High School over there. And uh, Hannah, you, where, where are you going to be going to school at? I'm going to Midland. Going Midland to Midland. College. Going out there to God's country. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what are you going to be doing out there at Midland? I'm going to be playing softball. Playing softball. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a, got a full ride out there, right? So I got it paid for. Mom and Dad don't have to pay for it. That's a good thing. You ought to be excited about that. I know they are. All right. Uh, congratulations, Miss Hannah. Stay right there. All right. We got one more. One more to go here. Uh, Miss uh, Peyton Rayburn. Peyton, I saw you over there, so come on. Come on. You're going to make your mama cry. Huh? Here you go. Here you go, young lady. All right. Now then, graduating from Hamilton High School. All right, what's next for you? Um, I'm going to Texas Tech with a major in animal science and pre-med requisites. Oh, <laughs> y'all not going to be far from me. They're both going out to God's country. How about that? All right, how about that? Uh, going to Texas Tech, guns up, going to be throwing tortillas and all that stuff. And Maybe, maybe, maybe. All right. Hey, uh, let's, uh, let's uh, you guys join with me. We're going to pray for them. Uh, and Because, uh, man, I tell you what, this, this is an exciting time. Uh, in their life, and uh, every last one of you, when you remember what it was like when, uh, when, uh, when you finished high school, uh, you you remember the excitement that you had, the joy that you had, uh, and whether you went whether you went to the military, whether you went to work, uh, whether you went to college, no matter no matter what you did, uh, that there was a new chapter that uh, man that started in your life, and uh, these two young ladies have an amazing chair, an amazing chapter in front of them. Uh, so, guys, join with me uh, in praying for them, and uh, let's celebrate them here this morning. Would y'all pray with me? Father, we thank you for today. Uh, Lord, I thank you for, uh, man, I thank you for these young ladies. Uh, Father, we, man, we thank you for, Lord, for their moms, for their dads, for their grandparents. Uh, Lord, that have, uh, man, that have poured into them. Father, we thank you for the teachers that have, uh, Lord, that have taught them, that have loved on them, that have treated them just like their own kids. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the teachers that they struggled with. Lord, the teachers that were hard on them. Uh, Lord, the teachers that, uh, man, that challenged them. Uh, Father, we just, man, we praise you for those experiences. Now, Lord, we ask that, uh, God, as this chapter, uh, Lord, as this chapter in their life is, is coming to a close, uh, Father, we pray for your guidance for the next one. Uh, Lord, we know that, uh, man, as they, as they venture out of their home, uh, Lord, as they, as they go out, as they make new friends, Lord, as they, as they experience new things, uh, Lord, as they, as they live in, in different communities. Uh, Father, we're going to pray first and foremost, God, that you just keep them drawn up to you. Father, I, man, I pray for, uh, Lord, for church homes out there for them. Uh, Lord, that will take them in, that will love them, and, and God, that will continue to speak truth into their lives. Uh, Father, I pray for, Lord, I pray for friends with, with, with uh, Lord, with like interest, uh, God, that, uh, that they can grow with. Lord, not only, not only, Lord, not only in society, but, Father, most importantly, in their faith. Uh, Father, we praise you for them. We pray your blessing on them. But, God, we also pray your blessing upon them. Jesus, we love you. We praise you. We ask all this in your most precious and holy name. Amen. Congratulations, ladies. Congratulations.
All right. We're going to dismiss the kiddos to uh, Kids Church, and we're going to give you about 60 seconds, 70 seconds, somewhere like that, to go find somebody you don't know and tell them you're happy to see them here this morning. How does it feel? I guess I better turn that off. Test one, two. gonna get it back in here everybody get back to your seat <laughs> we uh man i tell you what uh we can't uh we can't go any further today uh man without acknowledging that uh we have a we have a young lady back up here on this stage uh back there behind that keyboard miss denise and uh she uh man ble blessed to have her here today gonna be heading back to Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. Go, so that'll be going back next week, going back up there uh, for some more treatment and everything. Uh, so y'all continue to keep her, uh, keep her in your in your prayers. But we are thankful and proud that you are here with us today. And uh, you bet, you bet. Anyways, hey, let me pray for us one more time, and they're going to continue leading us in worship. Father, thank you for this time. Uh, Lord, we give this service to you. Lord, everything that takes place here, every song that is sung, Lord, every word that, that is spoken after a while. Father, I pray that it brings you honor and that it brings you glory. Jesus, we ask all this in your name. Amen. When the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the
Sweeter than the morning or the sound of the rain. From the mouth of the preacher and the sinner the same. Tender as a whisper, but loud in its refrain. May it hang on my lips for the rest of my day.
Lord, pray with me. Lord, we just come to you right now, God, and I just ask that you just open our hearts and minds. This morning, you've got a special message for each one of us. Not Jimmy's words, but you just speak a mighty, mighty word to each one of us here. Lord, we thank you for sending your son to die on the cross, even as sinners like us, Lord. We love you. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you all, thank you all, thank you all. What's up, brothers? Everybody good? Yeah, you think so? I hope so, man. Are you ready? All right, if you're ready, let me hear you say you're ready. There we go. All right, one word for the title of the message today. Very, very simple, very, very simple. The title of the message today is truth, okay? Uh, now, now with that, here's, here's what we need to understand because I'm on, I want to set a baseline for this. Uh, I want to set the, 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 the direction that we're going to go with this. And I'm, I, guys, I'm going to be, uh, you know, just 100% disclosure here with you right now. I don't know how long this is going to take. Uh, this may be very, very short today. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. We're going to see where God takes it. Uh, but here's the thing. Here's the truth, all right? Uh, in, in our society today, in our world today, truth has become subjective. All right, everybody understand what I'm saying there when I say that? You know, truth, truth has become what everyone's opinion is. And, and the reality of that is um, every last one of us in here, we have opinions about things. All right, uh, no, matter, no matter regardless of what it is, it doesn't matter what it is. You know, I've got, I've got my opinion on, on politics. I've got my opinion on global warming. I've got my opinion on what are the best cattle to raise. I've got my opinion on uh, green tractors being better than red tractors. I've got my opinion on that. Uh, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, what are they? They're simply my opinions, all right? Um, now, there may, be, there, there may be some absolute truth in bits and pieces of it, all right? Uh, but still, it's simply an opinion. Now, in, in our world today, in our world today, people want to take their opinion and place it as truth, uh, elevate it to a position of truth, and place that on somebody uh, and tell them that, hey, this is the truth, all right? Well, here's, here, guys, here's the, here's the reality of this. You have, I guarantee you, uh, we all have different tastes. We all have different likes. We all have different, different color preferences or whatever it may be. There may be some of you in here that can't stand the color purple, all right? Uh, for me, co- uh, purple is the greatest color on the face of this. I mean, I absolutely love purple, all right? And I'm always going to love purple. Not because I went to Tarleton, uh, but because he, pr- purple is royalty, all right? Uh, we, need to, we, we need to understand that. If you don't like purple, you know, that's, you got problems, man. I'm just telling you. Uh, we got different opinions on trucks, don't we? All right, um, it, you know, it, you may be a Ford guy. You know, I, I mean, I, I, I like my Dodge trucks. You may be a Chevy guy. I'm sorry, but you know, you may be a GMC, one of them government motor vehicles. I don't, I don't know. All right, but but at the end of the day, they're all opinions. They're all too expensive, and they're all going to break down, and they all lose value. All right, at the end of the day, you know, that's the truth of it. That's the reality of it. There. So so with that, you know, under, understand this because here's the meat of this. As a Christian. All right, as a Christian, guys, we need to understand, we need to know, we need to grasp the fact that we have a truth that is an absolute truth that we can hang our hat on. Everybody with me there? Y'all follow me there? All right, so in your Bibles, um, and, and let me preface this, but for, for you guys watching at home, uh, we, you guys that were here last week, y'all remember at the end of the service, there was that big, that big, big loud banging thunder everybody if you were here last week I, I, man if you I don't know how it didn't scare you guys it scared me I thought somebody done shot me back there at them back doors man it scared me to death well lightning hit somewhere not too far uh, and you know it, 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 you guys that were watching at home all of a sudden everything disappeared and I don't know everything disappeared on the screens I don't know we don't know what all's going on there it might have got that other piece of equipment up there but it got one of our computers back there in the back. So uh, hopefully, I don't know if we're still online. Are we online, Ronnie? We're still all right. Good. Uh, but you don't. You're not going to have scripture coming across because we're having some technical issues because of that lightning. Got one of our computers. Thank goodness, uh, man. Uh, huge shout out to Craig Parks up there at the school for getting us going today and uh, allowing us to be online. So uh, that's why we're having some issues with everything. So just 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 bear with us here. But here's the thing. 
in your Bibles. All right, if you got your Bible here, hopefully you brought it with you today. Uh, open up to John chapter 8. Uh, that's where we're going to be, John chapter 8. So you guys, are, if you didn't bring your Bible, you're out of luck, all right, because it's not going to be on the screens. They're in there. I put them in there, and I actually, they're on purple backgrounds, purple slides. They are absolutely beautiful, and I hate that y'all are missing them. I'm not lying, am I, Gene? They're pretty. They're really pretty. All right, so here we go. John chapter 8 beginning in verse 31 all right John chapter 8 verse 31 uh, and I'm going to read all the way through verse 47 check this out let's listen, listen to what he says here in John 8 31 through 47 Jesus said to the people who believed in him you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free but we are descendants of Abraham they said we have never been slaves to anyone what do you mean you will be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave of sin. A slave is not a permanent member of the family, but a son is part of the family forever. So if the son sets you free, you are truly free. Yes, I realize that you are descendants of Abraham, and yet some of you are trying to kill me because there's no room in your hearts for my message. I'm telling you what I saw when I was with my father, but you're following the advice of your father our father is Abraham they declared no Jesus replied for if you were really the children of Abraham you would follow his example instead you're trying to kill me because I told you the truth which I heard from God Abraham never did such a thing no you are imitating your real father they replied we aren't illegitimate children God himself is our true father verse 42 Jesus told them if God were your father you would love me because I've come to you from God I'm not here on my own but he sent me why can't you understand what I'm saying it's because you can't even hear me for you are the children of your father the devil and you love to do the evil things he does he was a murderer from the beginning he has always hated the truth because there is no truth in him when he lies it is consistent with his character for he is a liar and the father of lies so when, I tell, so when I tell the truth, you just naturally don't believe me. Which of you can truthfully accuse me of sin? And since I'm telling you the truth, why don't you believe me? Anyone who belongs to God listens gladly to the words of God. But you don't listen because you don't belong to God. Y'all pray with me. Father, we thank you for this time this morning. Lord, I thank you for a powerful time of worship here this morning. Lord, I thank you for a time, God, that we could stop. Lord, that we could just simply be still. Lord, that we could lift our voices up to you, Father, that we could, Lord, that we could worship you. Lord, we could worship you corporately. Lord, we could worship you individually. Uh, Father, we could worship you together as, as a family. Now, Father, I pray very, very selfishly here, Lord Jesus, that I can hide behind your cross. And that the words that, that come out of my mouth, God, that they're not my words, that they're not my ideas. Father, that none of this is my thoughts. But, Father, that every word, every word that proceeds from my mouth, Jesus, I pray it comes from you. Father, I pray that, 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 Lord, that our hearts are ready. Lord, I pray that our minds are ready for what you have for us here this morning. Lord, we know that when you're, where your word is proclaimed, Lord, when it is put out there, God, that it is never, ever going to return void. Father, you don't need me to do anything else because, Lord, your word is enough. So, Jesus, we, we, we pray, God, I pray for open hearts. Lord, I pray that there, if there is someone here, Lord, if there is someone that's, that, that's watching, Father, that if, if they don't know you, Lord, if, 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 if they're believing lies, Lord, if they're having doubts, Father, that, that they would hear this morning that you are the truth. Father, we pray for your safety here this morning. Lord, we pray for your glory here this morning. Jesus, it's in your name we pray. Amen. Guys, as we get to this, as we, and I get it, I know, that is a lot of scripture to try to digest this morning. And I get that and I understand that. And I'm not going to make light of that. And we're not, guys, we're, we're not going to sit here and we're not going to break down this entire thing. Uh, and, and so just, just bear with me here this morning because our focus, uh, our focus this morning is going to be on the truth. Our focus this morning is going to be on the fact that Jesus was who he said he was. All right? You know, we, man, we're real good. Well, we can be real 
good uh, man about complicating this stuff. And I don't believe Jesus made this complicated for us. Everybody, you, you understand what I'm saying there? Because he knew how ignorant some of us were going to be. He, let me back that up. He knew how ignorant Jimmy Holloman was going to be at times in my life. And so he made this simple for me so that, I, so, that I could, so that I could get it and understand exactly what it is that he wants me to get, what he wants me to receive from his word, from his message for each and every one of us. So, so with that... It's important that we understand because we need to catch who is Jesus talking to right here? Who is he addressing? Now, when you go back into the text and when you look at it, we see there in John 8, verse 31. In John 8, verse 31, it says, Jesus said to the people who believed in him, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teaching. So, so who are the particular individuals that Jesus is addressing here? He's addressing those Jews that profess to know him, that profess to believe in him. Everybody get that? That's not complicated for us to understand. So in essence, let me bring it forward to us today. Who's he talking to? Guys, he's talking to the church. All right, you understand that? He's talking to the people who, 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 who are publicly staying that they believe in Jesus, that they have a relationship with Jesus. In essence, he's talking to you. He's talking to me. Now, in, 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 you know, in full disclosure with this, there's, there's a lot of commentators out there. There's a lot of theologians out there that, 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 that will get into a debate with you and say, well, you know, yes, he addresses believers at first, but then he makes a shift and he begins to address the Pharisees and all that again. Guys, nowhere, nowhere in the text, nowhere that I have found in the text does it say that. And so, I, man, I believe wholeheartedly that this whole exchange that we just read, this entire dialogue that took place was between Jesus and those individuals, those individual Jews who professed to believe in him, who professed to have a relationship with him, who professed to be a follower of Christ, all right? Now, when we look at this text from that perspective, all right? And, and I want to challenge you with this because this has been an absolute challenge for me. When we look at this text from that perspective, guys, this needs to be an eye-opening thing that we, that, that we understand, all right? Because if we say that we believe in Jesus, if we say that we have a relationship with Jesus, if we say that we are walking in fellowship with Jesus, then guys, we've got to understand that we need to live our lives by that truth. We need to live our lives by that word. And so when we, when we get into this, when we, when we understand this, when we, when we start to break it down, there is a truth bomb in here that Jesus absolutely drops on these people. I want to call your attention down to verse 33. In verse 33, he tells them, but we are, this conversation, they say, but we are descendants of Abraham, they said. We have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean you will be set free? Now, here's the thing with that. Even though, even though they profess to have this relationship with Jesus, even though they profess to believe in Jesus and to follow Jesus, guys, we got to understand that they were actually placing their faith in something else. They were placing their faith in someone else, for that matter, if you want to get real specifically with it. Now, you know, they're banking their salvation on the covenant that God made with Abraham, all right? Now, we're not going to get into that today. We're not going to get into that today other than to say Jesus fulfilled that for them, all right? So understand that right there. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. This whole exchange. Now, let me, let me, let me back up with this. There's a lot of you in here. You were, you were raised by some amazing parents. Am I right? You, you, you were. A lot of you in here were raised by some amazing parents. All right? You had a mom. You had a dad that, man, I'm going to tell you something. They prayed for you every single day. You had a grandma. You had a granddad. You had people in your life that have known you from the time you were brought into this world. And their whole life, a big majority of their life was dedicated to, to praying for you, to, to being that example in front of you, all right? Now, on the other side of that, on the other side of that, there's, there was, and, and, you know, I think Jeff talked about this last week, you know, there's some of you in here that, man, you, you didn't have that. You did not have that parent that set that good example for you, all right? And so, I mean, I get that and I understand that. But here's the thing. If you had that amazing mom, if you had that amazing dad that spent time on their hands and knees praying for you, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you had that mom and dad that was just, man, the salt of the earth, just that amazing individual, 
you got to understand this no matter how good your mom was no matter how good your dad was and man i'm talking in past tense here no matter how good your mom is no matter how good your dad is you've got to understand you're not going to receive salvation because you have amazing parents everybody understand that no matter how good they've been no matter how many amazing things they've been no matter how faithful they have been all right they, their faith their faith cannot save you you understand that folks we need to grasp that we need to get that and we think well jimmy you know what's the big deal with that guys the big deal is the big deal of it is is that is the exact same ideology if you would that the, that 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 the that the jewish christians were banking their salvation on they were banking it on what other on what Abraham had done and the promise that God made to Abraham. And guys, what we need to get with this, what we need to understand, you cannot do enough good things. All right, and and I, you know, I, I, I look, I look at this crowd in here. I, I look at each and every one of you, and I know the people that that watch us online. I, I, I look at you guys, and you know what I see? I see some good people. All right, yeah, it, yeah, I pat yourself on the back. I see some good people some good salt of the earth people now i know some of you can you, you i know there's somebody in here you're gonna leave and you're gonna go do something ignorant and stupid i know that all right but i know that you're deep down inside i know you are a good good person guys but 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 hear me when i say this hear me when i say this there's no amount of good that you can do all right that's going to bring you salvation Folks, we've got to understand that. We've got to get down to that. That salvation is dependent upon one thing, and it's dependent upon that relationship with Jesus Christ. So if you're walking around and you're saying, man, hey, I, you know, Jimmy, I've done enough good things. You know, I've done enough good things in my life that, man, me and God are good. Man, we're good. No, you're not. No, you're not. Because if you don't have Jesus, guys, you're lost as a goose. Now, this, 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 this last week for me has been crazy. Man, it, it, this has been one of those weeks where, uh, man, I've been to Lubbock. I've been down just a little way south of Austin, just kind of been, kind of been all over the place, if you would. Uh, being able to visit with different people, uh, different churches and stuff like that, doing some training and stuff. Well, I, man, I got to listen to a podcast. One of the podcasts that I listened to this last week uh, was a message from Tony Evans. And uh, man, Dr. Evans was preaching on was preaching on light, and and I and I want to go there because this this really ties in, uh, man, to what we're to what we're looking back to looking at today. Uh, if you go back to John chapter one, uh, go back to the beginning of the book in your Bibles, John chapter one, and I'm going to read verses one through five to you. Hear what he says here. He says, "In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God." God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. The word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. You know, guys, I've talked. We have talked about this right here in this in this building. We have talked about this so many times. Whether it's whether whether it's in a Sunday morning, whether it's in a Wednesday Bible study, whether it's in a private conversation, whatever it may be, we have talked about this so many times. And we need to understand, and we need to grasp that light and darkness can never coexist in the exact same place. Everybody, you, you understand that? When, 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 you know, when, when, when if, if, if we turned all the lights off in here, all right, and if we, if, if we, if we put curtains on every window to where there could be no light from the outside to get in, it would be pretty dark in here. But the moment you turn a light on, that darkness is always going to flee from it. Darkness will always flee from the light of God. Light always wins. Guys, the, the amazing thing with this is, guys, it's the, the same thing takes place with the truth of God. Hear what we're saying here. Hear, what, hear where we're going here. Because the truth of God will not coexist with the lies that the enemy tells you. You understand that? They're not going to coexist in the exact same place. You're either going to you're either going to be walking in the light, and if you're walking in the light, you're walking in the truth. All right. Or if you're walking in sin, then guys, you're walking in the lies of the enemy. Hence, you are walking in darkness. All right. Now, folks, think about this. Think about this. You know, some of you are going to you know you're, you you may go to I don't know you may go to get something to eat tonight, and, and the sun's going to set and it's going to get dark. Are you going to get in your car and take off down the highway running 75 miles an hour without turning your lights on? 
That's ig that would be ignorant, wouldn't it? All right, that that would be absolutely ignorant to do that. All right, because not only do you put yourself in danger, but you also put everyone else around you in danger, don't you? As well, am I right? Everybody get that, folks? It's the same thing. It's the same thing with our walk with God. It's the same thing whether or not we're going to choose and, and be obedient and walk in the truth and walk in the light. You know, are we going to continue to walk in sin and walk in the lies that the enemy tells us here? You know, so we have to understand, you know, guys, they, they, when, when we have that relationship with Jesus, when you get tempted, here, here, stay with me here, all right? When, when we have that relationship with Jesus and you get tempted to do something ignorant, all right, and understand, guys, I'm, when you get tempted to sin, there should be a warning bell going off in your head. It, it should be, bang, you know, ding, 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 ding in there warning you saying, hey, you need to turn around and go the other way. All right, you know, it's kind of like you come to a low water cross and water's all running through it. You know, you got that, that, that saying, turn around, don't drown. Yeah, same thing with sin, guys. There should be something going on warning you, hey, you need to turn around and you need to go a different direction here. But here's what usually happens where what happens so many times, we choose to ignore that warning. We choose to ignore what the Holy Spirit, what Jesus is trying to tell us, what he's trying to show us. We choose to walk around in darkness. And, and you know, we get surprised and we get mad when we stump our toe. We get, we get upset when we have an accident or whatever it may be. We choose to believe the lie that the enemy tells us that, you know, hey, this ain't going to hurt anyone. This ain't going to hurt anyone. Nobody, nobody's ever going to know. Uh, and, and, guys, you know, the reality of that is it doesn't matter if anybody else knows. It doesn't matter if your neighbor knows. It doesn't matter if your friend knows. It doesn't matter if your boss knows because the one that it truly matters to already knows. And, guys, and that's God, you know, and, and, and the truth of that matter is when we walk in that darkness, guys, it hurts our walk with the Lord. It hurts our walk with where we're going with him. And that's why it's so important, so important that we walk in truth and life. You see, now hear this, if nothing else. The only way we can be better, the only way that we can ever be better, the only way we can be the person that God wants us to be, the only way, that, the, the only way we can ever do that is to truly walk in that light and is to truly walk in that truth. And, and you know, I get it, man. Some of you are sitting there saying, well, Jimmy, but, but you know, the truth hurts sometimes. Yes, it does. You know, and I know some of you are saying, well, you know, Jimmy, if I walk in that light, that light's going to expose the things that, that, the things that I'm struggling with, the things that I'm doing wrong. Yeah, it is. It's going to. That's the reality of it. You know, you, and you may be saying, well, but, well man, you know, it, it's going to show me where I'm wrong. Yes, it is. And here's the truth of that. That is a beautiful thing. That is a beautiful thing. You see, because God wants to show you where you're struggling. God wants to show you the things that, that you need to fix. God wants to show you the things that you need to get out of your life so that you can walk in true fellowship with Him. You know, God designed it that way. He designed it that way that it's going to hurt a little bit. It's not going to hurt forever, but it will hurt for a little bit, and that is a good thing. You know, man, I, I told you I, I went out to Lubbock. Went out, to, went out to Lubbock the other day uh, on Wednesday. And, you know, there's a couple of truths out there for me. And, and stay, stay, with, stay with me on this. But, uh, uh, man, as I, as I was traveling out to, to Lone Star Cowboy Church the other day, uh, you know, you could see off to the north, to the northwest of Lubbock, uh, you could tell there was a big storm building. I mean, you could, you could see it, all right? And if you've ever been out that way, you understand, you know what things look like out there. But there's, there's, there's two smells out in that part of the world two smells in that part of the world and if you've ever been through there you know it when you get to the edge of post there's a smell that hits you i mean it just hits you right in the face you're turning if you got your ac on you're probably turning it off going my gosh what is that it's a smell of oil okay and now for people who are born and raised out there man it's a good smell i mean it, it, that smells good I, I you know it's for some of you raised by a dairy that cow manure smells good to you, all right? Now, the other, on the other part of this, the other part of this is, as I got out at the church up there, and there's this storm. And, you know, the wind, I mean the wind gets up. Girl, you, you better get used to this because it's going to happen to you. And you're going to smell this, all right? 
Um, you know, when, when a, this time of year when a good thunderstorm really builds up and, and the wind is going, it's churning, it's churning that dirt, getting that dirt up in the air. Uh, you know, because right now there's a lot of, uh, man, there's a lot of ground that's tilled up, that's plowed up uh, because they're, they're in the process of getting ready to plant cotton and all that stuff out there. And so as the storm is coming in, I got out of my pickup and there was a couple of raindrops that started to fall, a little bit of moisture hitting in it, and then that smell hit me. You see, out there when that, when that dirt and that dust and that water that's coming from heaven, when they begin to mix in the air, they're, they're, it is an indescribable smell. We get it here every once in a while. We get it here every once in a while, but nothing compared to what it's like out there. And, and here's, what, here's what happens for me, because we all have things that trigger stuff in us. You see that, that smell of that oil, that smell of that, of that rain and that dirt and that dust. You know, <clears throat> that's a truth for me, because it's a truth that takes me back to where I grew up. It takes me back to my childhood. It takes me back and reminds me of, of where I'm from. It takes me back and it reminds me of the people that gave birth to me. It takes me back and it reminds me of the lessons that, not only the lessons, but the arguments and the fights and the disagreements and, and, and the, the fear that I had many times of my dad growing up. Uh, it, it, it takes me back to the blessing that I had, that I was blessed with as far as the people who raised me. It's a, it's a truth to me, but here's... Here's the bigger part of it. No matter how good that might make me feel, no matter how good the memory is for me, none of that can save me. None of that can forgive me for where I've messed up. None of that can change the fact that I have fallen short so many times in my life. You see, so, you know, no matter, no matter what it may be, no matter what the truths are for you, guys, the truth of it is that salvation only comes through believing, through accepting, through following, and through committing to Jesus Christ and accepting that grace that he has given us. You see, John 8, 32, and we read this a while ago, says, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Let me read that to you again. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free you see so my question is are you ready to be free are you ready to be free of whatever it is that's got you bound up are you ready to be free of that of that sin that you sit there and you think man hey it's not that big of a deal but guys it is a big deal because it separates us from god are you ready to be free of that thing that, is, that, that thing that is tempting you, that is pulling you down to a place that you don't want to go? Because here's the reality of it. If we're ready to be set free, and it's not, only, it's not only being free from that, but guys, God gives us freedom from fear. He gives us freedom that we don't have to fear anything because, the, because we're never going to be alone on this journey. You're never going to be a lone ranger out there that, that God's going to send you out there and you have to do it on your own. That's not how he does things. He's going to be right there with you. Jesus will always be with you. Are you ready to be free from yourself? Because here's the reality of it. Guys, the majority of us, you know, that, that's what holds the majority of us back is ourself. Because we have a, we, man, we have a fear that, you know, we, we, we keep trying to change what we're doing. And I know I'm not the only one. There, there is somebody in here, there's somebody watching that, man, you've been struggling with something. And, 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 it, and it could be anything. You've been struggling with it. And no matter what you do, no matter what it is, no matter what you do, it keeps popping its ugly head up because you're trying to do it on your own. Guys, that's not what Jesus, that's not what Jesus is asking of you. He's telling you, give it to me. Give it to me because I am the truth and I will give you freedom. You know, it's only by the power and it's only by the presence of God and the presence of Jesus that we can be reborn. Guys, God will give you freedom from other people. Check this out. H.G. Wells once said, The voice of our neighbors sounds louder in our ears than the voice of God. Let me read that to you again. The voice of our neighbors sounds louder in our ears than the voice of God. You got to quit worrying about what other people think about you. 
you got to quit worrying about what, well, man, you know, they're going to think I'm a religious fanatic. You know, they're going to think I'm judging them. So what? That's their battle that, they, that they've got to deal with. That's not your battle, you know, if, if Jesus has given you freedom. But here's the big one. Here's the big one. You see, the truth gives you freedom from sin. You're tired of it. Sin's ta- maybe sin's taken over your life. But, guys, here's the truth. Jesus died. Jesus was buried. And most importantly, Jesus rose from the dead three days later so that those chains that are holding you down, we sing about it all the time, so that that amazing grace, so that that amazing grace and those chains that that, that have confined you would be broken in two. Folks, are you ready to be free? Because it's only by living in the truth and accepting the truth that we are truly free. John 8, 32 and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Are you living your life based upon a lie? Or are you living your life in the truth that Jesus has given you when he spread his arms on that cross and died for you? Only you can make that decision, but we're going to give you that opportunity right now. It's the band. They're going to come up. They're going to close us. I'm going to ask you to stand right where you're at right where you're at today because if you can stand stand with us Jesus loves you you believe that he loves you he loves you more than your mama ever could he loves you more than your daddy ever will he loves you more, guys, I'm going to tell you, you know, guys, he loves you more than your wife ever could. Ladies, he loves you more than your husband ever could. Mom and dad, he loves your children more than you could ever love them. And it's because of that love that he has given the truth. If you've never accepted that, we want to give you that opportunity right now. Y'all pray with me. Father, we come to you, and Lord, I just, man, I, God, I praise you for your word. Lord, I thank you for Lord, for just giving it to us. Lord, giving us your living word. Father, if, if there is someone in here, Lord, that, that, that they've doubted, God, that they've doubted the truth of your word, that they've, maybe they've doubted you, God, I, man, Jesus, I just pray you, Lord, you speak to their hearts this morning. Father, if there's someone watching that struggled with that, Lord, I pray you speak to their heart this morning. Lord, that they would know that whatever they're struggling with, and, and Father, there's, there's not a single person in here that doesn't struggle with something there's not and and anybody that says no man hey i don't struggle with anything me and god look folk god that's their struggle right there because they're too prideful in there and man they're they're a liar so father i just man god i, I am going to pray for your conviction lord we're, we're we're all in this same boat father some of us man some of us have been rowing against each other lord help us to man help us to see your truth help us to see where it is that you're taking us and father i pray god i pray lord that as we walk out of here lord as we leave here lord that we leave with that encouragement of knowing of knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that that you have done something amazing for each and every one of us because you have revealed your truth to us god your truth was in your son jesus christ your son jesus christ paid a debt that not a single one of us could ever pay and it's only by his grace it's only by his sacrifice that any of us can cry out to you and call you Abba Father. Father, I pray for that individual, Lord, that's struggling. Lord, maybe they have said, yeah, I believe in Jesus, we're good. But Father, if they don't have that relationship with you, Father, if they truly have never accepted your truth, Father, I pray that today is the day of salvation for them. Guys, if that's you, this prayer right here is for you. Because his word tells us that when we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth, his word tells us that you shall be saved. If that is you today, this time right here is for you. Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Jesus, I know you died on that cross for my sins. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Jesus, I ask you to forgive me. Jesus, I ask you to save me. Father, if anybody prayed that prayer, Lord, give them the courage, Lord, to, man, to, to make it public, to follow through and be obedient in believer's baptism. Lord, to, to share with their family, to share with their, Lord, their husband, their wife, their kids, their mom, their dad, whoever it may be, with me, with one of the, Lord, with somebody else here. But man, hey, I have given my life to Jesus.
Father, we thank you, we praise you, and we give you all the glory. Father, it's in your name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you all for being here this morning, and you all have a great week.